Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have a pretty incredible show today, Crystal. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. We've got friend of the show, Michael Brooks, on to talk about Biden. We have some brand new, pretty explosive reporting from TYT Investigates Jonathan Larson on Mayor Pete. Wow. You want to stand by yeah. for that one. And a report from the ground in New Hampshire about Andrew Yang and Cory Booker and what's going on there. All that and more today on Rising. What are you looking at? Well, last week we talked about how Elizabeth Warren is the anointed one amongst Democratic elites in the media, which means you can expect approximately zero fair coverage of her bizarre past claiming Native American heritage. Her supporters have come on the show, they fanned out throughout the media, claiming that she's taken responsibility for it, that she's apologized and she's moved on. On its face, it's easy to say it's silly, but we need to remember the broader story that it tells us about her. She has a proven track record of being monumentally dishonest. This weekend, a clip resurfaced of Warren claiming that her parents had to elope because she was part Cherokee, her mother was part Cherokee and part Delaware. Let's take a listen. Okay, my mom and dad uh, were very much in love with each other and they wanted to get married. And my father's parents said, absolutely not. You can't marry her because she's part Cherokee and she's part Delaware. And um, after fighting it as long as they could, my parents went off, they eloped. It was an issue in our family the whole time I grew up about these two families. It was an issue still raised at my mother's funeral. It's a touching story, which is also not true. An internet sleuth in 2012 found records from the 1930s indicating that Warren's parents had their marriage conducted by a prominent pastor in the town, that the witness on her parents' marriage certificate was a family friend, that the wedding announcement in the local paper makes zero mention of the wedding being a surprise to their family. This is not just the run of the mill lying about one's heritage for gain. This is the belief to the bone and an utter refusal when confronted with the facts to grapple with reality. Warren's delusions ran so deep, she once claimed to be Cherokee to submit a recipe to a cookbook called Pow Wow Chow. Yes, really. Even better, she plagiarized the recipe that she supported from the New York Times. That's not to mention her own listing of an American Indian heritage on her Texas bar registration papers in the 1980s and her many years of Native American identification while a professor at Harvard University. The Boston Globe and Spotlight can say whatever it wants. If you believe that when a university is touting your so-called diverse heritage and it didn't help your career, then I have a bridge to sell you. Elizabeth Warren clung to her so-called Native American heritage because it made her different. I can understand that on a limited basis. What I can't understand and what many of us shouldn't forgive is the years of lying about this heritage, the years of misrepresentation, and the total and utter refusal to grapple with the larger story that it tells us about her in public life. Elizabeth Warren has a plan for that, but what is in those plans exactly? Will she stick to them and carry them through? Warren enjoys saying that she signed on fully to Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan, but then had a campaign campaign event in New Hampshire last week, she now says that it's a framework? I'm far from a Medicare for all purist, but if you're going to make this the centerpiece of your campaign and you're already waffling on what it might mean in the general election, then you're going to be dishonest with primary and general election voters. The same thing comes to her promise not to take big money during her campaign for president. After rolling over nearly $10 million in big money from her Senate campaign funds to her presidential race, she took it for years, has taken a break, won't necessarily rule it out for taking it in the future. She's an anti-establishment politician who's courting the DNC. You won't see any, any of these questions raised at the debate, and sadly, not even by Warren's Democratic opponents in the primary. It's a disservice to primary voters and a boon to the GOP. And I guess I shouldn't be that upset about it, because the more I get to talk about pow wow chow, in my view, the better off that we all are, because we could all uh, use some laughs in this life, Crystal. But I do think it is, it is just so, it's baffling the things that she clung to and she said for so many years. And like I said, I mean, that clip is from 2012. That's whenever a lot of this stuff. Oh, wow. 
It's fairly uh, recent. That's whenever she was running for uh, for Senate, and right. a lot of these initial claims were coming up. And that's that's the best case that we see that when confronted with the truth, she still stuck to her guns, and she was not telling the truth over and over and over again until she decided to run for president. And even now, it's pretty waffling. I just learned about yeah. Pow Wow Chow yeah. um, last week, <laughs> listening to Katie Albert yeah. and Matt Diaby's right. podcast. And um, yeah, I didn't know that. This yeah. is one of those issues that no Democrat is going to touch with a 10-foot no. pole, in part because Trump has made it a completely toxic conversation by calling her Pocahontas, mm. et cetera, and no one is going to touch it. But it does loom over her campaign, and it is a legitimate question to ask how she handled this over the years and whether she was fundamentally honest about it. I think that's the real issue here. There's only one way to deal with something like this that's mm. just hanging over you, that you keep getting questioned about, that you keep having yeah. issues with. It's to do a full like press conference to take every question anyone could pop, just completely come right. clean. That's the only way to get something like this off the table. And at this point, yes, she's apologized for this aspect. She's admitted this or that, but it hasn't been a complete like, here's where I was wrong. Here's Here's yeah. what happened that she needs to do in order to sort of clear the and decks because on if us. she did that, it would reveal how dishonest she was over the many, 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 many years before she's taking that DNA test. Yeah. Well, and I think you're right to point to yeah. the parallels with with Medicare for all, where yes, she says she backs yeah. it, but then it's well, it's a framework. And when we asked Adam Green, you know, he right. says she's going to come out with her own plan. Right. Well, what that what's that going to and what's what are we waiting for? <laughs> like, where is that plan? She's got a plan for everything there else. There you go. Next up on rising. Democrats are pushing forward with impeachment, but the latest polling suggests the majority of Americans still are not behind the measure. Friend of the show, Michael Brooks, he discusses the latest in the Ukraine scandal, why Joe Biden wants news networks to stop booking Rudy Giuliani on their shows <laughs> next.